guys, welcome back to Architox, and we are going to film video number three of the Architox series today. Today's um, video request was from you guys in the comment section, which I love doing because I know exactly what you want to see, and then I can film it for you. Recently, someone asked me what Molly program I use at my school, and also if I have any tips for learning modeling programs, particularly Rhino, and I thought we could get into all that today and I could share my tips and maybe you can share some with me as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So for a little background, I go to a five-year architecture program school and um, we have been using modeling software since our first year and I have a pretty good experience using a lot of different programs. Haven't used all of them, I'll talk about that later, but let's go ahead and talk about each one that I've used. Um, my journey started out with Bonsai, which was required for us to use, and honestly, didn't really like that program. I wish they would have kind of let jumped us right into the good software right away, but I guess they wanted us to kind of like get a feel for it first. Um, Bonsai was, you know, pretty usable, but we did some small scale projects with it. Um, maybe you've used it before, I'm not sure. I actually don't even know if. Um, they make it anymore or if it's used I have no idea um, but along with bonsai next we use something called form Z and we were supposed to use this to make like an animated video of our project and um, that was a big portion of our grade um, third quarter of first year I remember and I have to say I was so so bad at that it's actually embarrassing how bad it was and my animation of my model like didn't even do anything like it was supposed to be this cool like internal tour of the space and mine was just like my building spinning like in thin air so who knows how I passed that quarter with a good grade let alone no idea um, from what I heard from like younger students when I was like a third year they were still having issues with Form Z like the program would always crash and they end up having like contact the company and like get support for it and extension deadlines and all their projects so it honestly sounds like a mess not something I would gravitate towards really but um Used it, didn't like it. <laughs> Thankfully, our sophomore year, we um, graduated up to a new program, which was Rhino. And Rhino, it's called Rhinoceros Modeling Software. You've probably heard of it because it's very commonly used. Um, it's a 3D modeling program, um, very intuitive. And it is a nerves modeling program. And it's also, um, you type in a command and something generates out of that so it's really user-friendly in my opinion and I love it um, comparably I would say Rhino and Revit are the two most um, commonly used programs for schools so my school taught us Rhino I'm very happy they did because I personally think it's a lot easier to use and you have a lot more freedom with your design compared to Revit you um, are required to do your windows a certain size and doors and what, all of that jazz um, also, when I studied abroad in Copenhagen, all of the teachers there used Rhino. They were very familiar with Rhino and knew how to help you when you had any questions. And also, if they gave you like a mother model of any kind of project, it was in Rhino. So it was really nice to have just Rhino ready to go and not have to convert it and all that, that junk. Because let's be honest, when you're busy, you don't want to mess with having to add something more to your plate. And when it's converting a whole model, that's like pretty stressful. So to this day, I use Rhino. It's a really great tool for making your digital models and also for generating um, like laser cut templates because you can work in just plan view and do line work. It's also very easy to export um, a DWG file into Illustrator and from Illustrator into Rhino when you want to just work with line work only. It's very easy to crop back and forth between the two which I do very often for drawings, which I love. It's so great. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about, kind of. And um, on top of that, I wanted to share some advice also. People were asking me what is a good way to learn Rhino. And there is actually a website called digitaltoolbox.com, which was created by some students at my school, actually. And it's a really great website because they have video tutorials on how to use Rhino, and they really walk you step by step through what you need to do and they even have um, options where they will have like the drawings of an existing building I think it's the Farnsworth house that they have on there I'm not positive but then they will walk you through how to build 
from the plans into the house, which is great because I know a lot of schools will assign projects like that where they'll give you like an existing building and you have to create it into a model or maybe you yourself work that way where you create a plan first and then you want to extrude and make a 3D form from that. So I think it's great for that. I absolutely love it. Um, to move on in the discussion with Rhino, I um, want to talk about rendering because that's the next step after you make your model, you want to make some really nice looking shots of it. Um, personally, I go the really easy route and I use Toucan, which is associated with Rhino. It comes on there, it's free, you can run it on your Mac, you don't have to do switching to Windows or anything like that. Um, so I really like it. It is pretty basic, so I get a very basic render when I use Toucan and then I do a lot of my work in Photoshop, which works well for me. Um, I honestly was very, very bad at rendering for a long time and I used to do a lot of the work by hand in order to make it look more um, presentable and more my style. But in recent years, I have found that Toucan plus a lot of Photoshop has been my key to success. Um, the other rendering programs that are available for Rhino are V-Ray, for example, which I know many people use, a lot of my friends use, and they're really, really good at it, but I've never been able to get the hang of it, and I just know you end up spending more time working on the actual rendering itself and less in Photoshop. So it ends up being basically which one you want to spend more time in, maybe play up your strengths. For me, it's Toucan plus Photoshop, so I like it that way. And um, let me see if I can think of any more programs. Um, I guess the only thing I can think of now is that Rhino is great because there's a lot of plugins for it, which is like um, an additional little thing that you download and connect with the software, and they can do great things for you. So the most common one is Grasshopper, which allows you to do a lot of digital fabrication. And to put it in the most basic terms, you could have like 20 cylinders modeled, and you could say, I want all the cylinders to be between two and five inches in height with a range and have an average and you know set a maximum and a minimum. Of course it's a lot more technical and also exciting than that. I will admit I'm not really the best at Grasshopper either. I'm hoping to really learn this year and uh, get a grasp on it. But um, I have played around with it before and I can see all the amazing things it's capable of doing. And um, I think that's all I can think of. Otherwise I know AutoCAD is very commonly used in many firms and by some students as well. And Oh, I can't forget SketchUp. Um, I think that's also a great tool to start out with if you're just beginning learning how to model. I used to use SketchUp myself, but um, I had a nightmare where I accidentally deleted the whole file, and after that point, I was kind of done with it. And I also find it's a little bit difficult to use. I do know some people who use SketchUp to this day as fifth years, and they create beautiful things with it. Personally, it's not for me. I think it's a little bit too slow, and I can just get what I want to get done in Rhino. And it kind of works that once you learn one, you just keep going. So I hope that I have shared some valuable advice with you, or if not, it was just kind of interesting. I'd love to know what kind of modeling program you guys use, so please leave a comment down below telling me which one you use, and if anyone has any other great advice for tutorials such as Digital Toolbox, like I recommend it, leave it down below so other people can find it as well. And I want to thank you guys for watching. If you can, take a moment to subscribe. I make videos every week here on my channel about all things architecture. And be sure to share and like this video, share it with all your architecture loving friends, and I will see you guys in my next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. But we're going to do something fun, which is talk about all of my favorite architecture books. and. Let's just say it's not a small stack. Oh my god. <laughs>